Natalie woke up as the alarm rang beside her bed. She prepared for the day, packed her bags, and left in her car. She went to the tennis court to practice her game, then continued her day in the college, as usual, giving tests, and watching the popular boys play soccer as she did some paperwork. The boy named Keith played billiards as he was talking to a fairly old man. He called him Al and told him about this girl that caught his attention. He told the man that he shouldn't bother knowing her, that she was too good for him. Al offended by Keith asked him if he thought he himself was enough for her. Keith arrogantly claimed that he was already above the high school food chain, pointing to score after score in the game, but he didn't plan to date her. He mentioned he was planning to have fun with her. Al asked him with a serious tone what he meant by fun, to which Keith didn't reply. He left Al in the room after beating him in the game. A large group of friends from the same college had gathered up on the riverside in the wood for a campfire party. They called Brink. Natalie also came to it but didn't seem to really enjoy it. On the other side of the river, Keith was sitting alone in the dark and throwing pebbles in the water, glancing at the brink far away, wishing he could join in the fun too. Over at the brink, students were going crazy, playing naked in the river. Natalie averting her eyes to the other side, ran into Raphael. He was a very popular kid in college, with tons and tons of friends. They introduced themselves, and Natalie revealed she was there only to check up on the new transfer students, if they were getting along in the crowd. They had a small chat before it started to rain. Both of them said goodbyes and wished to talk later. The next day, Natalie woke up and was getting ready for her day. She came downstairs wishing her family and kept preparing for her college. Her father told her looking at the newspaper to prepare well for her upcoming tennis competition. Natalie replied that she was already practicing a lot for the past week, her little sister adding that she was faster now. She kissed her parents and went away to college with a light breakfast. In the class, the teacher announced the names of the partners for the project. He called out Setterstrom with Natalie Anderson. She sat down at her station when surprisingly found Keith already seated there. She confirmed his name and started the experiment. However, Keith started working on another experiment. She asked him to focus on the current assignment so that they can get good grades. He chuckled over it and kept doing what he was doing nevertheless. Annoyed with her lab partner, Natalie approached her chemistry teacher. She wanted him to change her partner, but the teacher asked her to bear with the guy and that he was pretty sharp at academics despite how he acted. She sighed walking out of the door, when she heard Keith talk rubbish about her to the teacher about how she was a control freak. She confronted him as he came out, asking him what was his problem but he walked away from her without answering. She changed her clothes by the locker and went to her next class when she found Raphael on her way. They had a small chat, and he invited her to the brink again, to which she replied she will come if he is going to. She looked to his side and saw her weird lab partner gesturing at her, which caught Raphael's attention. He asked who was the guy and if she knew him. She revealed that he was simply her lab partner and nothing else. She was with Keith again in the lab when he mentioned that they both once were in the same play. But she didn't pay attention to him, probably because he was playing as a soldier and she was a princess. He commented how she always saw herself above others. Hearing him say all this she asked him which club he joined. He replied that he wasn't in any group and he was doing the chemistry lab practices of his own choice. Later that evening, Natalie and her friend were talking about Raphael and if he was even going to be there or not. Natalie told her she knew he was coming as her friend was putting on some makeup. Natalie and her friend were waiting for Raphael to show up, when Raphael changed the music from the beats to a much more elegant one. All the students, including Natalie and Raphael, started to dance to the music. They both then sat away from the party crowd later on, and talked about what they wished to do after college. Raphael mentioned that he wanted to own his own record label whereas she told him she wanted her own magazine one day. They continued to talk when Raphael swiftly kissed Natalie with surprise. The young couple was sharing a kiss, when a light on the other side of the river blinked. It was Keith who was there in his truck. The next day Keith furiously went in his truck, ignoring Natalie calling out to him from behind. She told him that they still needed to fill in the lab reports. He questioned her, asking how Raphael was now her boyfriend, which she denied at first, but later questioned him back about how did he know about it, and if he was there at the brink. He said he'll help her complete her lab report on the way in the truck. She hopped in, with no other choice. She wrote down, what he narrated to her while he drove. He asked if he wished to go somewhere, after which he took a turn by himself and took her to a building, and then its conference room holding a wrapper in his hands. Both of them then sat down in the conference room to continue their lab report. He asked her if the college will ever get her a job at a place like this, referring to the room with the big table they were staying at. She chuckled saying that's never going to happen but mentioning that her father used to work at a place like this. He tried guessing her father's profession, getting all of them wrong. She said her father used to be a district manager for a phone company, mocking his terrible mind-reading skill. Hearing this, he grabbed her head from above startling her, and went on to take several guesses about her life. He mentioned that her father hated his job and he couldn't get admission into a big college. So he decided he will make his daughter achieve everything he could not, 
by filling her head up with this early on. He continued that she loved attention but wished that she wouldn't need to play tennis all the time for it. Natalie was sitting there surprised by how accurately he described her life but acted unimpressed. A lady then came in the door. She asked if she could help them, noticing the two students there. Natalie quickly made an excuse that they were waiting for someone. However, it didn't work out, and the kids were kicked out by the security. Keith was driving her back to the college when this time Natalie grabbed his head instead. She made some guesses about his family and home, which all suggested he lived with some small family on a farm. However, he revealed that he had some rich parents, a big house, and a lot of siblings. She was surprised by this, noticing how he looked like. She got a message on her cell phone, asking where she was. On reaching the college, she was confronted by her friend, who asked her why she was hanging around with that freak, referring to Keith. She simply told her that it was for a lab report and that she lost the track of time. Her friend mentioned that Raphael's parents are going out of town and that he wanted to invite her to a pool party. At the same time, Natalie's phone rang and it was Raphael on the line who invited her to another party. She told him that she will try to make it there if she has time after her tennis match. She played her tennis match acing her opponent and made time to go to Raphael's pool party. At the party, the students were enjoying themselves, swimming and playing in the pool. They later sat near the fire to warm themselves up when Raphael brought a towel for Natalie. Raphael kissed Natalie on her soft wet lips, covering her up with the towel. The next day in the lab while experimenting, Keith decided to have a little fun noticing the dead environment around them. He made Natalie join his little drama. They both talked to each other in an erotic manner, catching the attention of the girls in front of them. Getting out of the class, Keith asked Natalie if she would go with him bowling. She rejected his offer saying that she already had plans with Raphael. Keith kept persistently asking her, even saying that it wasn't a date, and just a normal hang around. However, she stood to her answer rejecting Keith's offer. Natalie later had a drive with Raphael and they spent some time with each other, acting like lovebirds. On getting home, she helped her friend out in writing her proposal to the university she aspired to be in, when she suddenly got a call from a random number. It was Keith on the line who was still asking her to go bowling with him sometime after school, repeating that he was not asking her out for a date. He told her he will pick her up at 5 and drop her back by 9, and she will have enough time with Raphael later on. She, however, again turned down his offer telling him that she already has plans. She also asked him to bring the lab notes as it was his turn to write the report, which was important for their score. Natalie's mother on hearing her talk with another boy asked if it was the South American boy on the phone. Natalie corrected her mom that his name was Raphael, and the guy she was talking to was just her lab partner, Keith. Her mom asked her to invite her boyfriend Raphael to dinner sometime, and that she would like to meet him herself. She agreed sighing. The next day at college Keith sent her letters, scribbled her notebook, and was continuously trying to get her to say yes to his invite. He even wrote a big note written 5 p.m. on it, while she was outside laying with Raphael. She was convinced to go with him noticing how hard he was trying. She asked Raphael if he could shift their date after 9 p.m., when Keith mentioned he will drop her back. He agreed to her even though their movie was at 8 p.m., and said he will plan something else for them. Now that she was in his truck, Keith asked Natalie why she didn't tell Raphael about them going bowling. The young girl told him it was none of his business. He drove his truck on the side of the road to get some bowling balls for them. They then went to a garage, where he worked on his truck, mentioning that the truck was very special, referring to it as his dear. However, she told him that he had run out of time, glancing at her wristwatch. He drove her back to her place when she saw Raphael's car coming their way. She swiftly hid in the footspace of the truck, making sure she isn't spotted by Raphael with another boy. He dropped her off near a street light, telling her that he will be here at 4 a.m. to pick her up. Natalie asked him what he planned to do at 4 a.m., surprised at what he spoke. He didn't reply to her with a huge grin on his face, she then walked out of the truck and the boy went away in his truck. Later at Raphael's place, they both lay on the couch, their shoes laying on the ground. They were kissing passionately in each other's arms. Raphael suddenly got up asked where she has done this before and jokingly said that they should stop seeing each other. She got a little mad at him for making a such joke. They then talked about what they planned to do in the future, like a heart-shaped bed and candles for the first time. They both chuckled about it before Raphael mentioned that they don't need to rush, after which they kept cuddling and kissing each other for the rest of the night. She couldn't sleep in her bed. Constantly turned over and looked at the clock till she realized it was 4 a.m. already. She came to the streetlight where he soon arrived. She got in the truck and left the neighborhood. Keith placed one of the bowling balls on the lawn of a teacher's house, while she watched him from the inside of the truck. Getting in the truck he asked her to put another bowling ball in front of their chemistry teacher's house. She hesitated at first but later the two spent their entire night doing exactly that. They stopped at a late-night motel to have some snacks. Tricking the waitress there making up a sad story about the bowling balls, and leaving a note there. He dropped her home later in the morning where she saw her father already up, 
working on his desk. He called out to her telling her that she currently held 14th position on her school's tennis team, that she will be able to get the scholarship if she stayed in the top 20 of the school tennis team. She assured him that she will maintain the position. She was reminded of what Keith guessed when he grabbed her head. She asked her dad if he applied to Duke in his old days, which he replied he did but couldn't get into and wanted his daughter to fulfill his dream for him. She continued, saying he should do a job that he liked, not the current one. On asking his daughter what she wanted him to do, she gestured clicking a picture of his father and left, to which he giggled. In college, Natalie was laying on the grass with her friend. The girls talked about Raphael and what she did with him later that night. Her friend mentioned that one of her friends told her that she saw Natalie with Keith the same day. Natalie made it clear to her friend that Keith was a good friend, who kept her busy when she wasn't around with Raphael, and that it was all working very well for her. To this, her friend was happy for her. Later that evening, Raphael gave Natalie's family a visit for a dinner. He was getting to know her family very well, impressing her parents and her siblings with his charisma. They talked about his future preferences and a little about his home grounds. However, he still was a little bit intimidated by Natalie's dad. The couple went to her room after dinner, where Raphael showed her some pictures of the camping place his uncle was going to give him. It was just for the two of them. Watching him try so hard for her she kissed him intensely, asking him if he wants to do some practice before the real thing. Raphael was taken by surprise, he started taking off his shirt when suddenly Natalie's brother came in with a big box. He said that some guy with a truck outside left a box at their doorstep for her. Noticing the steamy atmosphere of the room he gave them both a grin, and left the room to themselves. Natalie opened the box, finding a machine part covered in oil and dirt inside it. Meanwhile, Raphael read the note that came inside it. He read the note out to her that it was a carburetor toolkit fortunately not reading the other side of the note. Natalie saw that the note had a message written on the other side too, asking her to meet him at 9 p.m. the same evening. Raphael asked Natalie about this guy if he was a bit mad and why he was sending such weird stuff. She replied that he was indeed a bit weird and she didn't know why he sent her this. She sent Raphael away, telling him to wait outside. She went to confront Keith who was wearing diving goggles for some reason. In a very serious tone, she told him that he couldn't send a parcel to her home just like that, and she isn't hanging out with him this time. He told her it was an effective way of getting her out of the house. He then jokingly threatened her that he will hang out with her family instead. After which she had to give in to his request and hop in the truck. Natalie was furious with him that she had a life too and couldn't just drop all of it for him to just hang around. He replied to her, mocking that he wasn't forcing her to be with him. She was free to live her perfect life with her boyfriend, playing tennis and partying. He stopped the car at the crossroads, telling her that she was free to leave if she wished so. Angered by his mockery Natalie left his truck. She walked back to him asking why he was doing all of this, writing letters and stalking her. He didn't say a word to her. She was just about to leave when a kid walked out of a car beside them. He wanted to play with Keith and was telling him about the games he played. Keith asked Al to take the kid with him for now, and that he will pay the kid a visit later, waving the kid goodbye. Natalie noticing all this found out that Keith was actually a caretaker of that kid from his neighborhood, and he actually had a kind heart. She sat back in the car and he drove it again. He was driving when suddenly Natalie pointed out a dirt road and suggested that they go there. Keith was however surprised and asked her why did she pick this road. She replied that it was just a random pick. He drove his truck on the bumpy dirt road. The road actually led to the same place, where Keith used to watch the popular kids have their campfire parties. They both sat near the edge, watching the students enjoying their time at the brink. He told her that he had never been at the brink. She confessed that it wasn't actually a really big thing, and that the students came there only to hook up with someone or show off their boyfriends and dresses to others. She appreciated that he manages to maintain his actual personality, and not worry about what others thought about him. He thanked her for the same. They looked at each other as they slowly came in closer and shared a short kiss. However, freaking out Keith walked away from her reminding himself that they were strictly lab partners, while Natalie was still trying to figure out what happened. The next morning Natalie got a call from Raphael who was inviting her to the campsite again. She told him that she wasn't feeling like going to the brink. He requested a few more times before giving up to her and agreed to go there when she wanted to. After cutting the call the girl noticed the box Keith left for her on her table. She opened it up and started sorting the items and reading the manual. During her tennis practice, she lay on the court listening to some music, and at the party with Raphael later the same day, she danced with her heart and soul, with her hair open as lively as they come. She was also living and enjoying life to its fullest. She went to the other side of the brink with Keith again the next day, laying on the truck. She asked him again, seriously this time, where did he want to go after college he just replied that he wished to go to a truck show and that only the sky is the limit for what he can do. She suddenly saw the stars moving in the sky, and could feel that they were moving. The truck was actually moving. She yelled at Keith to do something to stop the truck from moving. 
He kept laying on the back of the truck. However, the truck was moving closer and closer to the cliff. She tried pushing the truck to stop it. Keith then jumped out of the truck's back and stepped on the brakes. Natalie took deep breaths to calm herself down, while Keith chuckled and was making fun of the situation which could have ended up with them both falling off the cliff. Natalie furiously confronted him that he could have gotten himself killed as she walked away from him in anger. He later dropped Natalie on her doorstep, and she told him to take care of himself. She snitched a small bottle of medicine from his truck, which she later found out was prescribed to someone with depression. She figured that he was suffering from depression and must be taking those pills to stay sane. The next day and the days that followed, she could not focus on anything. She asked her teachers and the receptionist for his contacts and whereabouts, but couldn't get any lead. But she found something even more interesting. Her chemistry teacher mentioned that it was Keith who chose her to be his lab partner, and that it wasn't just a random selection. Due to this, she was doing poorly on her tests and couldn't perform in her tennis matches. She could not think of anything else but Keith. He had simply vanished and she was worried for him. After her tennis match, Raphael dropped her home. He asked her if she was worried because of Keith. She asked him why he would think that, making it clear to him that he was just her lab partner. She apologized to him for shouting at him and told her she was just having a bad day, and that she will get better after some sleep. She went to her room ignoring her mom yelling at her for losing the match. However, she couldn't sleep the whole time and decided to look up a picture of Keith from their childhood, as he mentioned that he once played a soldier in a play where she filled in the role of the princess. She decided to go and check at his home why he wasn't attending college. However, on reaching the location she found that he didn't live there, and it was some other family which resided there. She was giving a test quiz in her chemistry class, when someone came into the lab catching everyone's attention. It was Keith who then sat beside her as usual and gave the test. After the test, Natalie asked him where he has been for the past two weeks, and that she was worried about him if he did something stupid. She even showed him the bottle of medicine to him, asking him why he didn't tell her he had a condition. But Keith was very cool about it and was bushing her questions off, when Raphael saw them both talking and Natalie give him his jacket back. He asked them both what was the deal with them both and how she got the jacket. She told him that Keith lent it to her because it was cold the last time they met. Keith, however, started to joke around, but Raphael wasn't in the mood for it. He told Keith to stay out of it and he wasn't talking to him. He left them both and went to class. Natalie tried to calm him down but he left her anyways. Later after her argument with Raphael, she went to face Keith once again. She asked him where did he actually live and why he chose her as his lab partner. He kept walking without answering her when she grabbed him by the arm in rage. She told him that everything he said to her was a lie and why was he doing so. Keith however didn't reply and went away. Natalie overflowing with anxiety, decided to take a look into Keith's locker. She looked around in the corridor and then broke the locker with the fire extinguisher. She took out one of the books where his address was written but before she could scavenge any more information, a guard came up to her. The principal of the college called her parents to her office where they all had a discussion over her most recent unexpected act. She lied that she wanted some notes that he wouldn't give her, but the principal suspended her for a whole week nonetheless. She was devastated so much that she walked out of her parents' car when they stopped at a signal and went home by herself. Later on, one of her friends gave her a visit. He gave Natalie the classwork and the homework she needed to complete. Before Natalie could close the door, her friend asked her what was the deal with Keith. That the whole college was now talking about her breaking Keith's locker, even Raphael. She got very furious getting this news and shut her friend out of the house. She then left for her tennis classes by herself, unlike usually waiting for her mom. When getting in the car she was spotted by Raphael. He yelled out her name but she didn't listen to his cries and kept driving, with Raphael behind her in his own car. On stopping at a signal Raphael approached her, asking her about Keith and that he wanted to talk to her. But Natalie told him that she wants to be left alone for some time. After which she wept outside her tennis court. She thought she should pay Keith a visit at his real address, which she saw in the book in his locker. She drove her car to the address, with a gift on her side. On entering the gate she saw someone working on a truck. He was Keith's father. She asked him if she could meet Keith and his father called out to him in the house. She glanced at the picture of a woman, possibly Keith's mom when she heard a loud bang on the wall from the inside of the house. Keith's father came back apologizing that he didn't want to see her for now, hearing that Natalie left the house. Keith came outside the house a few hours later smashing the door of his truck and driving it away. He found the gift box that she left for him and threw it aside, driving the truck away. But what he didn't know was that Natalie was laying hidden at the back of it. He drove the truck to the same place he used to every time, the opposite side of the brink. He was glancing at the students on the other side of the river when he heard her voice. She cried to him that she was getting attached to him and that she felt different with him for some reason, and couldn't figure out what he was doing. Hearing this Keith turned back and kissed, hugging her close. The kiss kept getting more intense, and they couldn't stop themselves. They both lay exposed in the starry sky that night, making love. Keith stopped his truck near the girl's house. She was happy and giggling the whole time. However, Keith then told her that they should forget that tonight ever happened, 
and that she already has Raphael and should stay with him. She never imagined him saying such words to her. She rammed the door close walking away from the truck, while he sat in the truck with some thought. Reaching her room, Natalie realized her mistake. She gave away herself to someone who didn't care for her, cheating on Raphael who loved her deeply. She cried alone in her bathroom the whole night, thinking of the same. In the morning, her parents confronted her. They informed her that her tennis points dropped by 15 points, and that it was now almost impossible for her to enter a college. Natalie was frustrated by all of this and her parents deciding her future. She went out of the house and left in her car. She drove at high speeds when she noticed a familiar red car. She went behind the car and found out it was Al, the guy who was with the little kid she met at the crossroads with Keith. She asked him about the kid and Keith. He mentioned that the kid, Billy passed away from cancer. She felt a sudden hole in her chest when he told her that Keith was also in the chemo program with the boy and only had little time left. She ran quickly to Keith's house, knocking on his door violently, requesting him to open the door but there was no answer from inside. The same night she called Raphael, to end things with him. He asked her the reason for it and why was she letting Keith mess up with her head. But she kept telling him it was complicated. He grabbed her firmly by her hand and she threw him in the pool. She told him that she really liked him, and hoped that he doesn't have to go through the terrible things some people have to go through, referring to Keith. The next day she went to college for the first time after her suspension. Everyone was glancing and commenting on her. In her chemistry lab, Keith showed up beside her again. She went away from him, telling him this was a bad goodbye. As she was leaving the college she saw her group of old friends by the side, and one of her friends watched her leave. But she decided to ignore Natalie and kept talking to others. Natalie kept moving knowing they were not her friends anymore. Her brother came up to her mentioning that the truck guy was there asking her out for bowling, while she was tinkering with the toolkit Keith gave her. She nodded to him and prepared herself for the evening. She went and sat in his truck, not saying a single word at first. She asked him why he didn't tell anyone about this, to which he replied that he didn't want to be treated as the sick kid and given sympathy for it. He was furious and sad about the fact that he didn't have much time left. That unlike others he didn't get to choose his future and all he could do now is bowling and nothing else. Hearing him say this, she told him to take a left and that they were not going bowling this time. She took him to the airport where she gave him a suitcase and a fake ticket. Keith was still confused about what they were doing. She said they were going to do the goodbye scene, where he confessed his true feelings to her. He initially told her that he ruined her life, that she was perfect before he came in and ruined it all over, and that he was the worst thing that happened to her. She listened to all of this, but told him that all this didn't matter to her and asked him to try and confess again. This time, however, he said that he was just a guy who lost all hopes in life when he met her. He changed, he loved to spend time with her, loved to hang out and talk with her. He walked away from her, telling her he wished he had a bit more time. Natalie wiped off her tears and hugged him saying that she doesn't care how much time they had together, that she wanted to be with him for the rest of it. They both kissed each other crying, while the line at the airport continued. Some days after he was gone, Natalie helped to fix Keith's truck. She painted it bright yellow, the way he wanted it and the engine all working. She lay at the back of the truck looking at the sky just like before she did with Keith as the truck moved towards the cliff. The truck kept getting closer to the cliff same as that day with Keith. Similar to him, she stepped on the brake right before the truck was about to fall off the edge of it. In the end, Natalie drove the truck to the truck show he mentioned to her about, and kept following the road as it went ahead. 